Hello and welcome to Weekly Intuitive Astrology and Energies of September 18th to the 25th. This is Molly McCord and thank you for joining me as we talk about the astrological energies over the next week as we transition from Virgo season into Libra season. We move through the Equinox portal on September 22nd and or 23rd. It does depend on your time zone. And that is when the sun enters Libra, and that will happen September 23rd at 3.50 a.m., and that's Eastern Daylight Savings Time. So again, you adjust to your place on the planet. And this is an important transition. There's a lot energetically that happens as we move from Virgo to Libra. And I'm going to start with an overview of that energy change. Then we'll also talk about the other changes that are unfolding as Saturn stations direct at 13 degrees and 55 minutes of Capricorn. And Jupiter makes the third and final square to Neptune on September 21st. So we have a lot of energies that are being set free that are returning to their strength and that's a good theme over this next week so as i do this show the sun is at 25 degrees of virgo now virgo is a mutable sign and every mutable sign is about changes flexibility possibilities the strength of mutable signs is to see choices to try something different, to try something new, uh, to not get tied in or held back by any one solution or one path. So the mutable signs are actually what prepare us for the change of season. And as we move through these last four or five degrees of Virgo, there's meant to be a tidying up energy from what started during the solstice back in June, June 20th, 21st. That's when the sun went in to cancer. Every cardinal sign is an initiation of a new season. Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. These are the four cardinal signs that start a season. They are a strong burst of energy, forward moving, what's happening now, what's ready for the next chapter, the next focus, and it lasts through the the next three months. So as we complete Virgo, we're also completing the season of summer. Uh, this could be winter for you in the Southern Hemisphere. But that's really good to note in these last final degrees of every mutable sign. We're meant to be transitioning. We're meant to be completing up and finishing up and then moving forward. It's taking care of what's unfinished business so that you can start the new season with that fresh burst of intentions and energies. So over this next week, there is a strong focus on completing allowing, and a quieting. The final degrees of the mutable signs can be quiet. It's where the energy can fade and feel that it's a a bit softer because it's basically that slow release from the energy that started at the solstice. So now we're going to transition into Libra season. And Libra is a cardinal sign, so it initiates fall here in the Northern Hemisphere, spring in the Southern Hemisphere. It initiates the next three months or three astrological signs, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius. And it initiates how we now share our energies with other people. So the other thing that's significant about these final degrees of Virgo is that it's also a transition energy from what started at the 
equinox in March. Okay, so six months ago. Because Virgo is the sixth astrological sign. It's halfway through the zodiac. And we look at what we've developed, learned, and come to understand about ourselves since the initiating energies of Aries in April. So we have a few different convergence points here in the final degrees of Virgo. Uh, We have the end of the past three months from the solstice, but we also have the end of the six months from the equinox in March. So this is how the Virgo energy is quite unique at this point in the zodiac because it's completing a few cycles and preparing to determine what you take forward into Libra season. And that Libra energy is also a transition into taking energy out of yourself. Aries through Virgo, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo are known as internal self-development, personal development energies. And then we enter the next chapter that is about relationship dynamics and sharing with others as well as sharing in the bigger world. So we have a, a significant transition this time every year, and we're noticing what we are ready to present to other people, how we show up in relationships, how there are relationships that are equal, uh, giving and receiving, how there is a place of balance within ourselves as we move into Libra season. But before we get there, on September 23rd, we're finishing up, we're tidying up, and there could be things that you need to take care of. Uh, You know, this could be in your physical world, financial world, spiritual, emotional, all of that. But wait, there's more. Yes, I'm trying to sound like an infomercial. Because not only is it a transition into the last, part of this year it's also the final months of the decade the final months of this decade and so that's also significant because it reiterates that theme of the the tidying up the making choices the looking at what stays what goes what do you want in your life going forward? What do you not want in your life going forward? It's a it's a very big energy of decision making, intentional, intentional decision making as you are supported in being more highly aligned with who you are at the end of 2019. And then if you were to compare it to who you were at the beginning of 2010, wow, what a difference. What a difference. Um, Probably in multiple areas of your life. So we have this theme being reiterated now of tidying up and looking at what serves you and what serves your next chapter or your forward path. If you've been doing your work as you go, meaning you've been aware of these energies in your life, you've been taking things as they've come, you you basically haven't procrastinated um, energetically or otherwise, this can feel good and strong and, you know, I'm ready, let's go, let's do this. Um, I'm I'm wanting what's next, and I feel like there's something there's something here around self acceptance at a very deep deep level of your being, a self acceptance of perhaps the past decade, uh, perhaps 
the year, 2019, perhaps the past three months, uh, or D, all of the above. But a really deep understanding that you've done the best you could and to not get tangled up in these knots. Like I'm seeing a cord of knots. And this could be your uh, phone charger cord. This could be, you know, the, the vacuum cord. But it's sort of like, are there any knots? that you're still tangled up in and to allow them to soften because you know when the, when knots are really tight it is hard to loosen anything up so this is a softening first and that's the self acceptance that's the part where you exhale you breathe out you allow you allow what is to be accepted without judgment, without guilt. Um, there's that, the, it's like it's a spiritual practice to be in this place of self acceptance. And it works with our deepest fears, it works with our deepest emotional wounds. I believe it also works with our relationship with God, source, spirit, the universe, whatever you call it, and how you view your relationship with the creator energies. And if you believe that there is a benevolent, unconditional love in your life, or if you have another belief system around that energy. Uh, And I'm feeling like more people are opening up and stepping into that place of unconditional love that they're feeling through their spiritual selves. And that is what is deeply, deeply healing them around what you could call our human trials our humanness and and where we act out of ego or where we say the wrong words or where we make a decision we regret or where we go down one path instead of another, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Instead, the more that you practice that place of extreme self-acceptance, it softens any of those tangled cords that might still exist. Um, And I'm feeling this at an energetic level, so it could be like in the aura, it could be in the emotional body, it could be in the the spiritual growth. You know, just trust what feels right for you. You could feel it in your body. You could feel it uh, related to a chakra. Trust what comes up for you. Trust what it feels like for you. And imagine it softening. Imagine it just getting softer, which means you don't have to do anything. You're not solving it. You're just energetically letting it soften. And as you practice that, it's like a softening into that place of self-acceptance and a deeper spiritual love for yourself. And I'm feeling like this is part of the energy right now because of what what we've learned, what we've healed, what we've come to understand, the higher perspectives um, that you've obtained around uh, your life, uh, an experience, a relationship, a time in your life, whatever it might be. More and more people are having these bigger understandings. And there's this energy of also being okay with letting it be. Uh, We typically say letting it go. But what I'm getting the guidance on right now is to let it be, as in 
you allow it to sit on your desk and you can just look at it. It's there. It happened or it exists or it's it's a part of you, it's a part of your world. It's just it's there. And then as you allow it to just be, there can be this, it's like I'm feeling like it's an energetic release that happens. And it can be something that you start to see in a whole new light, in a, in a whole new way. We're, we're really being supported in this place of neutrality and energetic equilibrium, where before maybe it, you know, really got you going on the seesaw on the teeter-totter of emotions and energies and you'd swing one way and swing the other way and, you know, there could be sadness and grief and anger and hurt and, you know, you go up and down on that seesaw with yourself, within yourself, and then the seesaw slows down and it slows down and there isn't as much of an energetic pull and it just has this essence of halting and peace. And this can happen through your intention and your work. This happens through the healing process. This happens as we move through these energies. And that's what I'm feeling as we approach Libra season. Now, Libra is about the scales, uh, the scales of balance commonly, and the ways that we are more objective about our life and what we've experienced, uh, that we see things through a place of detachment uh, in a new way. But I'm getting the image of this seesaw that has slowed down and that maybe it's not rocking you as much as it used to because of the time that's passed, the work you've done, uh, where you've grown, what you've come to understand. It, It has that calming effect. So the more that you can be in that space, be in that energy, It's going to work with you in a powerful way. It's like a diffusing energy, too. It's it's diffusing. I'm feeling like it has the vibration of om, that the om sound uh, that vibrates through the body and brings in a peace. So if you can make this part of your energy at this time, it's going to greatly serve you as we begin the next uh, three astrological signs as well as we begin the next decade. So the energy between Virgo to Libra at this point is, the again, the tidying up, the finishing, the completing, uh, what goes out, what you don't want. There can be a lot of purification, a lot of uh, detox, a lot of, I don't want this, no, 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 no. So that's one of the strong energies here. The sun then goes into Libra, and as a cardinal sign, it says, I'm ready to meet people. I'm ready to socialize. I'm ready to have some new conversations, uh, to to go out there to present myself, uh, to listen to others, to engage in the world and with people in a fresh way. And I think about this time of year as how it's really common to start making plans for the holidays. Uh, to make arrangements, whether that is to meet up with family or friends or travel. And in fact, I would strongly advise you to do so. The more that you can take care of in September, the better. Um, And that's because we're going to be having Mercury retrograde through the first three weeks of November. And I, I know I'm jumping ahead here, but I want to give you a heads up that Mercury retrograde will start October 31st, but Mercury will enter the shadow of Mercury retrograde October 
12th. October 12th at 11 degrees of Scorpio. So October and November, we have Mercury retrograde energies of things changing, you know, new details, plans shifting, um, things, you know, falling through or being canceled and rescheduled. Anything you can do now for your upcoming holiday season will probably uh, be worth it and bring you greater peace of mind. So the sun enters Libra and will be traveling alongside Mercury and Venus in Libra. Uh, The sun will be behind Mercury and Venus uh, as they are moving through Libra at a faster speed and they are opening us up and bringing in Libra season. Both Venus and Mercury do well in Libra. So this is a great time for connections with people, communications, um, going out, socializing, again, making plans, uh, you know, figuring out partnerships, contracts, what you're going to do with others. All of these Libra energies are highly supported right now. So there's support here for what you're ready to take out into the world, what you're ready to offer. Uh, to sell, to share, all of that is very strong at this time. So we have those energies working with us. And then we have the bigger energies in the background. Now on Monday's show, I talked about the soul growth messages from Saturn, Pluto, and the South Node in Capricorn. Um, How these areas of our charts have been highlighted and especially throughout 2018 and how there's going to be a shift in energy as of today as I'm doing this podcast with Saturn stationing direct at 13 almost 14 degrees of Capricorn and being able to move forward after traveling with the south node since May. So now Saturn moves forward. And this means that a part of our life is ready to move forward. Something that's been stalled, delayed, uh, where you've been wanting there to be traction. I I described this in Monday's podcast as the riptide, as the rip current that's been pulling us back. And it's like you can't swim out of it. You haven't been able to get released from something. And it could be something that showed up for you uh, when Pluto was at this same point in your chart in 2014. Okay, so 2014 to 2019, uh, we've had these re- some reoccurring areas of our chart that have been really reworked, deeply reconstructed. And now there is gaining traction to move forward. When a planet stations direct, it's still moving very, very slowly. And so the rest of September is going to feel a little bit slow, but it's it could feel like a, a changing of the tide that finally there's – the wind behind your back uh, or the waves, the waves behind your back now helping you move to that new shore or towards that goal, uh, that clarity, that whatever you've wanted to achieve, it's like there's now going to be support for that energy. Uh, that will get stronger in October. So there's transition here. As I've said, it's been the theme of this show, right, transition. But there's gaining momentum that moves you forward And that alone could feel like a relief. And frankly, I hope you feel some quick wins around that. Some some areas of encouragement would be really great in this part of your life uh, because I know it's been really intense. So Saturn stationing direct is significant. And then we also have on September 21st the third and final square between Jupiter and Sagittarius and Neptune and Pisces. This has been an ongoing uh, square or connection between these two planets since January of this year. And when there are three squares 
especially between the slower moving planets. We are moving through something that we've had to see in a whole new way. We couldn't rush through it. Uh, It's like the universe has been pointing to you to look here at the middle degrees of Sagittarius and to look over here at the middle degrees of Pisces. And these two places in your chart uh, have probably been very unstable and been a lot of change, a lot of uncertainty. Uh, You think you're going to do one thing and then that leaves, that dissolves. You think you're going to try something else, that also leaves. There hasn't been steady ground. And on top of that, uh, the typical buoyant, abundant energy of Jupiter and Sagittarius has also been surrendered to Neptune and Pisces. There's been this, I'm going to call it, it's like a changing vision where you thought it was going to be one thing, nope. You thought it was going to be this, it's this, it's this, nope. Okay, how about this? You know, let me choose door number three. Nope. It's like all these things that we think we're meant to follow, pursue, go for, it's been confusion after confusion after confusion, which isn't good for the ego. Um, Jupiter and Sag is the ego of of what you want, what inspires you, what propels you uh, to move forward. But it's all been under the stronger energy of Neptune and Pisces asking us to stay open, to not get locked into an egoic desire, uh, to not get locked into expectations, to also not be hard on ourselves uh, because that Jupiter and Sag can be unconsciously judgmental. Uh, It can be quite opinionated and say this is the only way. This is how it has to be. And Neptune and Pisces is saying, is it? Does it? And then you get no answers. So it's been swimming in the sea of no answers, confusion, what am I supposed to do? And this is how we learn continual trust and faith in ourselves. And the reminder that, okay, spirit is working on something really fantastic here. Something is coming together. I don't know what, but I'm going to stay motivated. I'm going to stay inspired, and I'm going to stay positive in myself. I know that this energy is working to support me, even though I can't see it yet. The third and final square is happening on September 21st. After that, Jupiter moves forward. Jupiter is free from this influence of Neptune and Pisces. And I do have a separate video for you on YouTube uh, that goes through this energy even more. Uh, So check that out. But what happens is that there is a sense of Jupiter and Sag finally expands, finally steps into more of what it wants and is seeking and what it's after. And again, this energy is getting stronger in October. So you see the common thread here? Uh, Saturn is going to get stronger in October. Jupiter is getting stronger in October. But right now is a key transition, a key transition of these energies finally moving forward, gaining strength, And allowing you to walk in the world with renewed faith in yourself and in the bigger picture. So this is a time of transition. How many times can I say that? Uh, But the transition is in the moving forward and in understanding how far you've come, because I'm feeling that at a really strong level too, um, the spiritual acknowledgement of how far millions of people have come 
And it's quite significant because you chose not to carry some wounds and pains forward. I'm getting the image of 70-30. It could be that, you know, 70% of it feels good, and then there's that 30% <laughs> that can trigger you or get your ego going or really affect your um, emotional world. But that 70% is huge. And I'm feeling that acknowledgement around how far we've individually and collectively grown. Now, the energies of the next decade are very, very big, and uh, there are many things to consider. But I'm feeling like it's not necessary to go into that conversation or to go down that path right now. Again, there's something about being at this point of equilibrium and neutrality within yourself, within yourself. And this is a balancing of both sides of your energy, very Libra, yin and yang, anima, animus, masculine, feminine, Uh, left side, right side, as well as your human side and your spiritual side, so your human energy and your spiritual energy. Um, You could look at it as, how this is a time of coming into balance with yourself at this higher vibration where your masculine and your feminine energies are in harmony, are in a very graceful relationship with one another, if that's what you feel. Um, There's been a lot around dissolving who you thought you would be in this lifetime, dissolving what you thought you were achieving or what you thought you were demonstrating or how you were showing up in the world, and perhaps even a greater peace around those titles, those roles, those identities to be a part of a collection. Oh, this is cool. I'm seeing those Russian stacking dolls where you open the big one first and then it goes to the smaller one and then you open the next smaller one and the smaller one and it gets down to the minuscule one. But I'm seeing it in reverse where it's opening up to the next bigger version of self and opening up to more and to more and to more. And so that's kind of what I'm seeing on the desk is like this understanding of, okay, I was here, I did this, I had this role, I had this identity, I was this person, I was this version of myself. Um, It's funny, I'm feeling like some of you, you know, you're like, I have 20 stacking dolls. But it's these stacking dolls that are, they are never ending and they're quite motivating and encouraging um, that there's more of you to step into and to grow into and that also throughout this year and years prior you've received hints of what that could be, of what that looks like, of what feels right for you now. And there's this pressure growing, an increase, could even be in desire, an increase in desire to move into this next bigger stacking doll that is... um, I already feel it in the auric field. It's sort of like it's already present. It's already 
here, and now it's a realignment of your human self, especially the mind and the ego, to open up to that. Because what happens is that it brings up our deeper fears of judgment. That's a big one. Such a heavy layer of yucky judgment. And a lot of it stems from lifetimes and cycles of uh, religion and belief systems and, and limitations um, around what it meant to be a good person or what it meant to follow the rules or stay in line or do this and you'll be loved and do this and you'll go to heaven and do this and you'll be, you know, a, a good person and the priest will like you. I mean, all this stuff around the religious programming that's falling away. I mean, it's been falling away. But I feel like there's something at a personal level where each of us, I'm going to call it a relationship with judgment, a relationship with being judged and what that does to us and how it shrinks. Ugh. Ugh. It shrinks like it literally is a vacuum seal around our energy, like it shrinks out. who we are or the vastness of ourselves it shrinks it out and it's interesting because judgment is something that we do to each other someone drives a car you probably make an assumption about the vehicle they're driving their life who they are etc right uh, appearances you know the, the power of visuals the power of what we see and, and the judgments that we make um, that are very unconscious. So there's something that's coming up now that's kind of the next part of ourselves to work with. And that's definitely through this Libra energy of being objective, of noticing yourself, of looking at what's being mirrored back to you, is to look at how much am I judging others? You know, be very honest with yourself. Don't You don't have to tell anybody. How am I judging others and what is that showing me about about myself but about it's like this overlay of expectation, an overlay of opinion, an overlay of energies that I'm putting on them that reflects my own values or my own shoulds, my own belief systems, my own unconscious programming. And the more that each of us chips away at this bit by bit and notices it, oh my gosh, I I just saw this. It's like a box of doves fly free. It's this lightening and this opening of energies. And you could understand some things about yourself. Um, You could also understand where this energy came from in your life, where it originated from. Did it originate from your family? Did it come from a teacher? Did it come from your peers? Um, Did it come from, you know, going to church? Or where did it originate? And, And what you can do with this is just get curious. Oh, I didn't realize I was thinking that way about someone, and of course I don't know them, and and I have no idea what their life is. Why am I thinking this? Why am I making this assumption? Or what is this judgment about? So the more you can stay curious about this and talk to the judgment, again, I see like the box of doves, like something gets lightened, something is free, and you you can then ask yourself. How loving and kind is that? And usually it's not very. (laughs) 
<laughs> usually it's like, oh, man, I, that is rude of me. That is not cool. Um, and then you can notice it and work on that pattern or work on that assessment. This is really big um, because of how indoctrined we are with certain programming. So I feel like this is part of the transitions into the next phase of what we're meant to understand and see in ourselves, that relationship. Um, and, and for you, if, if you're not feeling that judgment is the thing, there could be something else that comes up um, that you're meant to objectively see in yourself or understand or work with. So um, this is a really interesting time of, again, stepping back from ourselves and looking at ourselves in a new way. And that's part of what Libra does through its balancing act. And I think I'm going to stop there for today's show. And I'll be back on Monday uh, with another podcast as always. I hope you feel the turning of the tide here over these last few weeks of September. I hope that you feel some clarity in these transitions. And again, I hope you also feel that point of equilibrium within you, uh, energetically, emotionally, spiritually, and to honor that, honor how far, how very far you've come. Thank you for joining me. You can find out more about my books, my spiritual teachings, consciousness topics below this podcast. Uh, There's also more about business development, where I offer resources for healers, spiritual experts, authors to grow and develop your own business. And I have some very cool things to share with you next week. I have a big announcement next week. I'm so excited. And I hope that you'll tune in, um, because I hope that this announcement is really supportive of what you need in 2020. So, my friends, have a beautiful week ahead. Happy Equinox, and I'll catch you back here very soon. Bye-bye.